prices and performance for Intel's upcoming Alder Lake CPUs was just leaked online. And guys, especially when you take a look at the prices, it is looking really, really good. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Brobot. Brobot is a free, super fast program that scours the internet searching for restocks of the latest GPUs, CPUs, and consoles to help you find what you're looking for before it goes out of stock. Thanks to Brobot, I was finally able to purchase a PS5 due to its extremely fast speed and in my case, I noticed it was actually minutes faster than all other popular bots I've tried. So if you're looking for a tool that can help you secure that new GPU, CPU, or console, be sure to click the Discord and Telegram links in the description below to find out more. Alright, so Intel's new 12th generation Alder Lake CPUs are set to launch on November 4th and a ton of people are very, very excited for these CPUs because they're bringing a lot of new features and new performance to the table and in fact, we just got a whole bunch of new information about these processors so let's not waste any time, let's go ahead and get right into this. Now this information does come from videocards.com and as always, Always, I will have all my sources linked in the description below. And so starting off with the i9-12900K, this is going to be a 16 core processor with eight big cores and eight efficiency cores, uh, which are gonna be running up to 5.2 gigahertz, which is actually a little bit faster than I was expecting. And in terms of price, it's gonna come in at $589, which is actually very, very competitive. In fact, if we compare this to the uh, Ryzen 9 5900X, which is currently available right now, and is also a 24 thread processor, well, actually that CPU comes in at around $560, and this CPU should be a little bit faster than that, so I think this is going to put AMD in a little bit of a tough spot, and they're definitely going to have to drop their prices, especially on the 5900X and 5950X, as it's going to make those CPUs, you know, a little bit of a harder purchase for a lot of people, other than the people who are maybe looking for the absolute maximum multi-core performance on the 5950X, as I do believe that is going to slightly outperform the 12900K when it comes to that multi-core performance, but now moving on to the 12900KF, and here's where things get even better because it's essentially the exact same CPU minus integrated graphics coming in at $564 or basically identically priced to the 5900X that you can find on Newegg right now. Once again, this is going to put a lot of pressure on AMD. Then moving down to the 12700K, this is a 12 core processor with eight big cores and four efficiency cores up to five gigahertz uh, for the maximum turbo. And this is coming in at a price of $409. So this is actually pretty competitive as well, but even better, the 12700KF once again, basically the same processor except for no integrated graphics. And this one's actually $384. So this is going to put a lot of pressure on the 5800X. And then moving down to the 12600K, this is going to be, I think, a really good gaming processor for a lot of people, especially considering the price because it's going to have 10 cores, 6 performance cores for efficiency, uh, up to 4.9 gigahertz, and it's going to be $289. And honestly, that's a fantastic price. And even better, the 12600KF, once again, basically the same CPU, no integrated graphics, $264. That's actually a fantastic deal. But now let's go ahead and move on to the performance numbers for the i9-12900K because here's where things get a little bit spicy and there's going to be a lot of arguing and debating online because there does seem to be a little bit of classic Intel shade thrown in here and we'll touch on that in just a second. But if you're to believe Intel, you know, what they show in their slide uh, is they show nine different games. We have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Apparently it's 3% slower than the 5950X. When you compare the 12900K to that, then we have Crisis remastered where apparently it's the exact same performance formula one 2021 apparently it's eight percent faster age of empires 4 11 percent faster far cry 6 14 percent faster hitman 3 15 percent faster mountain blade 2 banner lord 16 percent faster grid 2019 20 percent faster and finally Troy, a Total War Saga coming in at 30% faster, which is a very significant jump. Now, keep in mind, these may be kind of cherry-picked by Intel, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second here. But also, if we go ahead and we add these up, even though that 30% faster sounds very, very impressive, we're actually looking at 12.33% faster than the 5950X um, on the 12900K on average so yes it is it's a decent jump and like i've been mentioning in my past videos i wouldn't expect this cpu to be uh, you know anywhere more than 15% faster on average than the 5950X when it comes to gaming. Now, in terms of single core performance in stuff like maybe Photoshop, I do believe this is going to be a very, very fast CPU. It looks like it's going to have a lot of single threaded performance, but it does appear that in terms of average gaming performance, it's not going to be a massive step up. And to make matters even worse, there does appear to be a little bit of Intel trickery going on once again. I don't know necessarily if it's you know on purpose or if they just didn't have time, uh, but it looks like according to 
Game over on Twitter. He said, hmm, so the gaming comparison between the 12900K and 5950X was run on Windows 11 before the AMD patch. Why Intel? And then Kyle Bennett actually responded to that and said, please tell me this is not true at Ryan Trout. And if you don't know, Ryan Trout does actually work for Intel. And he actually responded. And I actually really appreciate this response. He said, quote, yes, this is the right answer. Testing was done and our briefing with the press was done before the patch was released. So yes, that's definitely really unfortunate. Now, whether or not Intel did this on purpose is something we definitely cannot prove. Um, Honestly, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt because although they have done a lot of cherry picking in the past, and a little bit of moves that I would consider to be shady when it comes to representing accurate performance numbers. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on this one simply because it may have actually been impossible for them to get it done on time uh, for that Windows 11 patch to come out. Now, that being said, if they knew about the performance that was going on with Ryzen on Windows 11 when it first launched, they probably should have tested Ryzen on Windows 10. I think it was the wrong move to do Windows 11, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say that this was potentially a mistake. So unfortunately, it looks like Intel likely made a mistake here um, that just so happens to show their processor in a favorable light. So that being said, you know, even though it's showing 12.33% increase on average over the 5950X, I wouldn't be too surprised if you saw somewhere between more like a uh, five to 10% on average increase from the 12900K to the 5950X. Um, you know, probably 10% better on average at best would be my guess. Now, ultimately, even though in gaming the 12900K isn't going to necessarily be blowing the 5950X out of the water, at least when it comes to stock versus stock performance. And by the way, they did actually use very good RAM on both of these processors when doing this. Um, I actually still am very excited for the 12900K because it is finally bringing Alder Lake up to speed in terms of multi-core performance. Like I mentioned earlier, the 5950X will likely have a slight lead in multi-core, but a slight uh, deficit when it comes to single core performance. So it's just going to be more choice for us as consumers. And actually, when it comes to the pricing, like I mentioned earlier, this kind of destroys all of the Ryzen chips at their current prices because you're going to be getting slightly more performance for actually less money pretty much all the way down the stack. So AMD's definitely going to have to reevaluate their pricing on their current CPUs because this is going to make them look very, very bad. So this is just honestly a really good thing for consumers. It looks like Intel's actually getting very, very aggressive, which is really nice to see. So this is why we want competition from AMD and Intel, because when they start going at it, only the consumers win. But hey, that's just what I think. How fast do you think the i9-12900K is really going to be? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.